Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on your time zone. I see we're at the top of the hour. Today, we're gonna to focus on auditing and governing AWS. This is a shorter version of what we presented at our user conference, Navigate, a few months back. And this time, we're actually gonna look at some product as well, not just slides. So with that being said, let's get started. Today, we're briefly gonna go over some items. This is certainly meant to be a longer discussion, but we'd like to very quickly show some capability sets here. Um, some of the challenges we have with um, working with infrastructure as a service, in this case, AWS. Um, some of the things that we've been able to do in the latest revamped version of our governance module for AWS that I think you'll find pretty interesting, uh, a very brief demonstration, and we'll close out with a summary. So AWS in particular has some challenges. Um, there really are a lack of established best practices from account creation, entitlement granting, um, you know, policy creation, um, perspective in this particular world, it creates a very complex entitlement model. Um, we'll look at some of that, but in general, we, we have things we have to consume like static policies, inline policies, dynamic policies, uh, the ACLs, the resource policies, and SCP policies, and how those are granted, perhaps not in, directly in your Active Directory or directly in your AWS, they may be given by your single sign-on provider. Um, so depending on how people belong to certain groups, give them access, give them limitations, um, all those sorts of things make it a pretty complex entitlement model. Um, show you how we did that, how we've worked around that, and get kind of give you briefly some, some information on how we accomplished that. So um, without a doubt, I'm sure if you are an AWS knowledgeable person, you're very aware of that <laughs> and the challenges that result. Um, this goes without saying, um, Misconfiguration, mismanagement, particularly of cloud-provided platforms, is a very serious concern going forward. We all know that, backed up by the Gardner Analyst Report as well. Um, so what makes this extremely complex? I mentioned it a few minutes ago, very briefly, but the organizational hierarchy can be very complex inside the organization. Um, there can be scoping going on. People can have a certain kind of access within certain hours. Um, so that does not necessarily mean they have it. They also may be granted access to an S3 bucket, for instance. We're going to look at that today. Um, and then another policy takes it away. So the, the fact that they tried to do this capability, they tried to open up this particular item inside an S3 bucket, and it's been rejected, we need to record that. That comes from the CloudTrail log that is created on AWS. So we need to expose that inside our platform to verify whether or not these entitlements were successfully accomplished or denied in the past, to know whether or not these are true entitlements these people have. Um, the policies can be complex. I mentioned some of that before. There are lots of kinds of policies. They can come from other applications, not necessarily just AWS. Um, so that can create some trickiness there as well. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but uh, that is a complication that we face. Um, also, federation can be a little bit challenging as well. So we need to make sure that we're gathering identity information via the federated environment and applying it appropriately to the right identities that exist on our backend. In general, here are the challenges we face. The hierarchy and com policy complexity, very challenging. Uh, conditional authorization, also very challenging. And, and the federation. And that really sums up the three areas where AWS governance is very different from most of other applications that we touch. Um, so we're gonna to focus today just on AWS, but you're gonna see some other applications inside the environment also. So I'm gonna skip past the benefit and value statement. I think we've talked quite a bit about that already, but applying essential best practices governance to an AWS platform so that it can be governed, it can be certified, it can be access reviewed, in a way that's logical for a business user as well as an IT user, and also automating uh, onboarding, offboarding, moving of employees throughout the organization, and ensuring that that's handled just like it should in every other application that we govern. So in a nutshell, this is what the governance module handles. It's a policy visualization. We actually have the ability to crawl the policies inside the tool and see who they impact and how they impact and what limitations they are. Uh, a bit of enhanced connectivity here as well. Uh, tying in this particular platform with a log has been very interesting. 
uh, support for federation because opt-in users are created in other applications um, and then consumed by AWS. Not always, but they can be. And then our basic lifecycle management, which is that joiner, mover, lever scenario that we have, applying that inside the AWS world. Um, and like I mentioned before, that log aggregation is really key to some of this. So you're gonna see some of this in the product, um, but lifecycle support, being able to either automate or make requestable items inside AWS for the different types of, of access that somebody may want inside AWS and making it very simple to request. The policy support as well, we'll see some of this. Being able to crawl the policies, seeing the last 10 attempts for this particular type of access, whether or not it was successfully granted or not, right inside the application. This is very helpful for not only security personnel, but also maybe a manager reviewing somebody's access on a quarterly or yearly basis. It would be interesting to see whether or not they succeeded or failed the past times they tried to actually use this piece of access. And last but not least, federation mapping um, across the board. Some interesting things we can do with all of these things tied together is it also enables things like our SOD policy engine to create SOD policies. Let me give you a pretty common example. We can read from authoritative sources whether or not somebody's an employee or a contractor. We can write very simply an SOD policy that says that a person labeled contractor should not have rights to anything that has been crawled and found to have information about payroll. Um, those types of things are very easy to do. So expanding our SOD policy engine to also consume all the information we're gathering from AWS can be very interesting. Oh, I got ahead of myself. So um, without that being said, let's hop over to some actual products. Okay, so I have a couple of things logged in here. Let me see if I can get rid of this screen up top. Um, so here we're looking at an admin logging into the SailPoint Identity IQ platform. There's a lot going on here, but we're gonna focus on a couple of things. One, I wanna show you very quickly the applications we have in the environment, and let's focus in on my AWS environment. So all of these applications, we're currently providing joiner, mover, lever functions, access is granted automatically, taken away automatically, as people join and move in the organization. Also, we're providing certifications and SOD policies across all of these. But inside the AWS, let's focus on that one very quickly. I have the ability to create custom deprovisioning rules, reactivation settings, uh, things of the sort like that. I can also note whether or not something is happening on a native change detection also. Um, but the real interesting thing is when we get into the account section. So I'm aware of all the users that are currently have capability sets in my environment inside the AWS. We've enhanced their identity cubes with the AWS information, the types of access they have, and the history of all those accesses. That's pretty interesting information there as well. So without anything more, I'm going to see if I can get rid of this box first. <laughs> Let's drill down into a particular identity, one we're gonna work with today. I'm going to use Amanda Ross and our organization, and I'm going down into what we call her identity cube. Inside this particular area, we're looking at all the information we've extracted for Amanda Ross, both from authoritative systems, as well as all the entitlements and account information she has across all of the applications of the enterprise. So this is Amanda Ross, this is her cube. We're gonna come back and look at that in a second. But first we're gonna log into AWS as Amanda and we're gonna take some actions. So my AWS login screen, this is Amanda Ross. We're gonna go ahead and sign into that environment. And as you see the very familiar screen inside here, we're gonna play with the S3 bucket that we've set up. So we have an S3 bucket here, a, a folder, if you will, for her, for benefits allocation. 
let's take a look at what capability sets or what items she has inside there. A couple of different files she can take a look at. She can take a look at benefits allocations by department, et cetera, some employee data. This is definitely some pretty um, high risk information out there. And we're gonna click download. We're just creating some audit trail log for this particular person inside the S3 bucket. So what does this do back inside the system? I've drilled down here into Amanda Ross's identity queue, and we're looking at her information on AWS. <clears throat> she has an AWS policy, Benefit Administration, which gives her access to that S3 bucket we just took a look at. But inside there, she has a couple of different capability sets. So here in the resources, we're actually able to crawl out and take a look at the permissions, any conditional information around those permissions. This is a consolidation of all of the different policies that we're aware of that impact this particular capability set. Lastly, we can drill all the way down and see the last times that she has taken action on this S3 bucket inside this particular file folder, if it has been granted or not granted. This is really important to know whether or not somebody might have a capability set that's granted to them inside AWS or via one of the policies, but for some reason they're not able to actually get them, then that's not really an entitlement that person has. Also, they can be conditional. They can be times a day. They can be from a certain location, um, only inside the US. When you're outside the US, you're not allowed. Those types of things happen quite often when you set up S3 conditional situations. But inside here, we're able to look at this information this is very important, not only for when we're looking at entitlements for Amanda, but also Amanda's boss will want to see this when she's going through and reviewing some access for her as time goes on. So usually an annual, sometimes a quarterly review, this information is extremely pertinent for that manager to see whether or not this has been successful or if it's been rejected in the past. If it's constantly rejected, that would be a nice candidate to remove that piece of access going forward. So that's briefly just going over everything. I'm gonna pop back over really quick and just do a brief summary. So AWS, our governance module, sure in some ways we treat this much like we do other applications, but it is a bit more complex. We wanna provide our industry leading identity lifecycle support. That's automating using entitlements or roles or attributes of identities coming in through authoritative sources and automating what we'd like to have is 80% of their access within a few minutes of them coming on board. And then also automating that same type of access as they move. Applying that to the AWS world as well to make sure that the person is ready to work inside an AWS environment. We're providing that deep policy support. We're reading all the different kinds of policies in on a regular basis. We're applying that inside our platform so that we're aware of the types of access that may be granted and whether or not there are limitations to them as well. And supplying that in a visual way for the users inside um, SailPoint's Identity IQ. Last but not least, we're applying that through our advanced separation of duty policies as well so that you can use our interface to create separate separation duty policies that make logical sense to include the AWS policies that are out there. And then of course the federation mapping which is required to pull on the users that apply to all of this. So without anything more, I'm gonna open this up to questions, give you back some time, but if you have any questions, please feel free to share that inside the chat channel. I'll do my best to answer them, and if I cannot, then I will take your information and I'll get back to you. I appreciate your time, hopefully this was helpful. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out. We'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thanks and enjoy your day.